Mexican food, is it the same throughout Mexico? I mean, we, no, no. we often think it's just a, a couple of, let me get this right, burritos, or uh, there's some tacos, mm -hmm. or corn chips, and yeah. but it's, it's a lot more than that, isn't it? Yeah, completely di you know, different in different regions. We decided to, to turn our little tiny cafe into a taco stand, and mm -hmm. we were op moving that operation to bigger quarters, mm -hmm. and we so we went off to Mexico City, rented a VW Bug, and drove from there to the Yucatan, and then to Oaxaca, and Puebla, and Veracruz, all having different, completely different flavor mm. profiles. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, we really, at that point, you know, we didn't have any experience in that world with those kinds of flavors. I mean, we, we were, you know, studying French cuisine. Mm. And so it was such an eye-opening experience because everybody's impression, you know, 25 years ago was that it was, you know, beans and rice and cheese That's and right. enchiladas and burritos. And a, and, a beer and it, or two. Or, right. But yeah. And guacamole. It's almost like peasant food, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, it was just, it was so very specific. And I think when we took our first trip down there and we stayed with one of our prep cook's family in mm. Mexico City, we saw, it opened our eyes to all these incredible ingredients that were totally sophisticated, mm. very unusual, things that we had never seen. And certainly, I don't think many people in this country had seen. And so things like achiote and tamarind and you know, dishes like pabil and pozole, they mm. were very, 25 years ago. The amazing coastal things like the ceviches and the cocktails and all the different mm. ways of serving fish, which really it translated well to Los Angeles. We, we were amazed. We came back with a, a already written a huge menu of things that we couldn't pronounce. It was totally cool because we then learned about this cuisine that I think very regional mm -hmm. and also, I mean, certainly as sophisticated as the French or the Italian cuisine. Mm -hmm. And it was um, something that was com a complex cuisine mm. that I think, even still now, this many years later, people are just beginning to understand way more than men. Very brave though, I mean, California, and, and you know, like all parts of the world, you have your staple diet. You've created a new twist to a staple diet. How long did it take though for the, the, the locals to say, whoa, this is pretty damn good? Well, we were very lucky. You know, in 85, we opened the first Border mm. Grill, and it was pretty much packed from the minute yeah. we opened it. Mm. But we had, it's a tiny little restaurant. It had, mm -hmm. you know, 10 tables and, or 11 tables and 12 bar stools. Mm. And, and then we moved it to larger quarters. Also, we outgrew the space, and that was in 1990. So the restaurant here in Santa Monica has been there for 17 years? 19, 19 right? years? 19 years. But also, I think we were, we sort of, from the very beginning, 1981, when we opened our first little place, City Cafe, I think we became known hmm. pretty early on for doing very eclectic, unusual food. So people, I think, already expected something hmm. a little bit different. You know, we were doing, but this is, you know, we did, we're known for our vegetarian plate hmm. 30, 29 years ago. I mean, that hmm. was pretty unusual back then, where we had you know, some Indian influence and, you know, we were doing, um, you know, lamb's tongue with the fresh thyme vinaigrette. So people sort of already saw mm. us as maybe being a little bit mm. out of the box. Mm. And so when we started to do Border Grill, I think it pushed people to want to experiment a little bit. And you're also very successful though. You've taken the whole Mexican cuisine or the, the whole experience over to, uh, to television and to books. Absolutely. I think yeah. the books have been great mm. at, at getting people more, more you know, in tune and interested in, in understanding the food. The customers, I have to say, in Los Angeles, we're very lucky because mm. they've been sophisticated. When we first started cooking in L.A. in 81, I was amazed at how, you know, adventurous the mm. palates of, of our customers were. Mm. They would really go with you mm. and, and trust you. And st nowadays, people are even more sophisticated. They've read all kinds of cookbooks. Mm. They, you know, they, they're really savvy about food and they're looking for that new interesting ingredient or technique and that's why you have to stay on your toes, keep traveling, keep learning. What about future projects? I mean, you, you've done just about everything. What well, else is there? You know, we've, we've sort Conquer of... the world. Yeah. Oh, well, we've taken our career in, I think, ways that we're each passionate mm. about. Some of those passions, you know, we share and other passions we have separately. But 
I think we've always done the stuff we love to do. Mm -hmm. So we've taught a lot because we both, I think, just naturally love to be teachers. Mm -hmm. And you teach every day in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. we, are, we take political stands with food and we do a lot of nonprofit work. Mm -hmm. Because it's stuff that we're really passionate about. So mm. that's sort of how we, you know, made decisions about mm. what to do. Not necessarily how do we grow our company, mm. but more about what are the things that we're excited and want to do. So that always seems to change. I mean, it may be two years we may, one of us might think, oh, let's do, mm. let's do something about this. But I think we've, you know, we're, we're very involved with... Um, the Scleroderma Research Foundation. Mm. We're very involved with Share Our Strength, so uh, which are both big nonprofit mm. organizations. So I think it it changes as we change and as we grow older. Mm. Things that become exciting to us. If somebody wants to taste this exquisite food, how do they do that? What's the, what's the web address and the address for for your restaurant in Santa Monica? Well, you can go to bordergrill.com, mm -hmm. and that'll take you to a bunch of different websites, but the one for Border Grill Santa Monica and Border Grill Las Vegas, and we also have Ciudad in downtown mm. Los Angeles, which is more of a Latin-inspired menu from all over the Latin world, South America, Central America, the Caribbean, even Spain and mm. Portugal. And then we now have just launched, yesterday, a taco truck. So you can uh, go online and find out where it is, and you can meet down up with freeway, it. Down the freeway, down the border grill <laughs> north. Yeah, the yeah. border grill taco truck, which is it's fantastic, just totally wonderful. Could be cool. anywhere. And then Susan has a new restaurant called Street mm -hmm. on Melrose and uh, and Highland, Highland, Highland and Melrose, Highland. which mm -hmm. just opened a couple of months ago. And you can go to eatatstreet.com mm -hmm. to find out about that. Mm -hmm. And you've done just about everything. You have so much out there. You're expanding. In, in great waves. In one word, how would you describe yourselves? Uh, boy, I hate one that. word. One word. Do we, how do we describe both of us? Yes. The dynamic duo. Dynamic. Yeah. <laughs> I think cheating. that's good. I was going to say, you know, um, focused. So dynamic, then in brackets, focused. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah. But not too or hot. Or passionate. But yeah. not, not too hot. Yeah, too hot. <laughs> passionate. Passionate's probably good. Thank you very much. All the very best. <laughs> and you. Uh, may you keep sizzling those grills for many years to come. <laughs> ah, thank thank you. you. We thank hope you. so. Thank you. Andrew Gold in a classic gold song. It's next on Who's Who Speaks.